Ohio. This is Rudy Land and Clark W. Griswold. We're on our way to California. We're looking for grapes and stuff. You know where we can find some grapes there? No. <laughs> Who, what's the uh, movie that's come out? Gringo. Is the dude from Salem the star of Gringo? Dude from Salem. I, I saw Gringo. Yeah. Yeah, it uh it was okay. I um I'm kind of I'm kind of uh starting to not like Joel Edgerton. He's been in like yeah, every he's, movie um, that I've seen. Yeah, honestly I, I was a big fan of him, but yeah, he's uh he's kinda he's been What has he been shit. in that's been good? You're a big fan of him. Uh he was in a movie called Animal Kingdom, which is pretty cool, it's a crime movie in Australia. Um uh, I'm trying to think of what else he was on. Uh, he uh, he directed a movie called The Gift, which he starred in, which is a really creepy movie with uh, Jason Bateman. What happens and, um, in The Gift again? Give me the you know the uh, plots and I don't want to spoil it because it's a movie where it's anything is basically. It came a out three or four years ago, just about maybe. Yeah. It, it's it's worth a watch. I remember it's, seeing the previous. I didn't think he directed it. I thought it'd be like yeah, he wrote and directed it, and he stars in it. And, uh, Did he have anything cool to do movie. with that movie with Frank Langella where like he had no jaw and he gave Cameron Diaz a box where if you press a the box? button somebody else dies or something? I thought James Marston was on that. Um, I know the guy who directed Donnie Darko did that movie. He could have also been in it. Do you know what I'm talking have... about though? Frank Langella. Frank Langella. Yeah. Langella. He was in it for some reason. Yeah, it's based on a Twilight Zone episode. You know, if you're going to do a Twilight Zone episode, there's a ton of really great Twilight episodes. Do you I've... think they had to pay anybody for the rights to that? Oh, we yeah, could, for sure. We could film a Twilight a Zone movie today. Yeah. Yeah, I, there's a lot of Twilight Zones I haven't seen. I know they're on Netflix. I, well, I really got to get around to it. I I used, they used to play Zone. it um, like every day on sci-fi, whatever sci-fi used to be. I used to watch it like every day it was when sci-fi. I was like 12 was or 13. <laughs> they and changed it to S-Y-F-Y. And it's like, it yeah. used to be just sci-fi. It's easier, for, it's easier phonetically, I guess. Yeah. Because people don't know what sci-fi means, apparently. I, I saw it and... Um, what movie were we were just talking about? The Box. Something else. We were talking about something else, too. Talking about Joel Edgerton and the Gift. We were talking about what good he was in. Um, just everything I've seen him in has been fucking shit. Lately, yeah. He hasn't he was, turned me off of anything, but it's yeah. just very he was, he was, samey. He was good in a movie called Midnight Special. Yeah, uh, which, Midnight Special. which was a sci-fi kind of, almost like early Spielberg kind of movie. Um, which Did you was ever see kind Super of cool. 8? Yeah, I really liked Super 8. I never saw it. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it quite a lot. Um... You know, really, it's it's Spielberg worship. It's a throwback to, you know, that those kind of um, eat the big, the good Spielberg movies. Let's say I don't I don't know how much you'd like it now because of Stranger Things because it's like it's, it's Stranger Things. You know, it, that movie is Stranger Things basically. Did you watch Stranger Things yet? Yeah, the first season I've seen. What'd you think of it? Um, I how really... fucking awful was goddamn what's her name? Uh, Winona Ryder. Winona Ryder. I the entire time. I didn't hate her. I I'm not a big fan of her, but I didn't hate her in the movie. She's playing this distressed mom. But the and entire she sells it, the entire time, it just it wanes on me. It's too too wackadoo for you. Too much. Yeah, I can see. You know, she's she, she's very. Uh, you know, love it or hate it. You know, her whole career has been that. You know, she could really yeah. turn you off. Um, I'm trying to think of like a time where she was really good. Maybe the Bird Heathers. movies, Heather's, um, um, Edward Scissorhands, I guess maybe. She was in, yeah, Edward Scissorhands, <clears throat> right? Yeah, she was good. At she that. was supposed to be in the Godfather Part Three. She do you think she? Do you think I was gonna say? Do you think she'd be better? <laughs> yeah, which the Godfather Three, for everyone out there, fuck you if you think it's a bad movie. It's not. I it's still have yet to see movie. the whole thing. It's not a fucking bad I'm movie. I'm sure it's not a bad movie, but it's, I it's am... It's a great action movie. I am certain it's not as good as the second no, or the first absolutely one. absolutely not. I mean, Godfather 1 and Part 2 are arguably the greatest fucking movies ever made. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, so, when you're going from the greatest movies ever made to just a really good crime movie, you know, people overreacted, you know? I mean, I've, <laughs> I've still yet to watch the whole third one. I've yeah. seen, like... 
the first hour or two or two and a half hours like four or five times yeah. i've never come to finish it though my expectations were so low i avoided it for years well my expectations were high because i didn't like you never when heard I that saw people it, shit all over it yeah well no when i saw it i was like little kid man like yeah the DVDs just come out. I was like 12, 13. My mom was watching the first one. Oh, the first one's kick ass. Oh, the second one's kick Fucking ass. Amazing, the second one. I was gonna say, you like the first or second one better? Um, the, the second one's a better film, but I've I always watch the first one more. It's a lot longer. The second the one. second one's like takes three hours a lot more, and twenty minutes. Lot more out of it. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a it's, there's not as much set pieces. It's more of a dialogue movie. Yeah. But the fucking Robert De Niro fucking oh flashback, God. so fucking amazing. I was gonna say the oh Pacino and uh, John Mike John Casale, the who, guy who passed away, who, did, who plays right off. Yeah, you know about? yeah. Their interactions are incredible, man. Yeah, one of the greatest crimes is just the fact that he fucking died so young. That he didn't get to make. I mean, all the movies he was in were like fucking masterpieces. And he was great in them. Yeah, he's just unbelievable actor. You know, fucking Dog Day Afternoon. Yeah. Godfather, the Conversation. Conversation. Deer Hunter. Deer Hunter. Uh, yeah, just fucking amazing. You know, but really good actor. Yeah. It sucks. What did he die of? Cancer or something? Yeah, I right? think he had like pancreatic cancer or something. Mm, it sucks. Yeah. Men's health. Fuck feminists. <laughs> Yeah, um, but yeah, the, all the scenes with fucking De Niro when he's young, when he's got his, what a he's perfect, going to kill somebody. What a goddamn perfect casting choice. Oh, man, and that was when he was really first starting, and when he's got the fucking towel wrapped around his arm, and he goes to kill that guy, and he shoots, and it lights on fire. That was when he was first starting? When did the second Godfather come out? Uh, 74? Oh, wow. Yeah, so that was when he was like really pretty much first starting his career. He probably had like just done Mean Streets. When did Deer and uh, Taxi Driver come out? Deer Hunter, Deer Hunter was like 78, 79 yeah. maybe. Yeah, fucking, man, fucking De Niro had a fucking unbelievable couple decades. You know, he had, well, three decades. It just sucks now though. <laughs> I just wish, I just, it's like seeing Orson Welles in a wine commercial. It's you just <laughs> if you don't got it, man. Just oh, you don't slumming. need the money. You don't slumming. need the money. Just fucking take a hike, take a rest, go well, off into the sunset. Man. You know, it's interesting you brought that up because I, when I look at De Niro now, I, I, I almost feel like he's forgotten how to act in a lot of ways. Because like every director wants him to just do his performance from Goodfellas. He's like mm -hmm. stuck in those exact same facial, you know, expressions. Yeah. From Goodfellas. Like, that's what everybody wants him to do. And when you look at his earlier work, like you were mentioning the deer hunter, like all of the expressions on his Bro, face, the joy when he's the with end, his friends. At the end, so when him and walking, God. it almost brings me to tears every time, oh. man. I gotta rewatch it. I, I, it's been a few years. I love you, Nick. And yeah. he's, he's fucking crying. It's pretty yeah. fucking powerful stuff, man. Yeah. He's, if the deer hunter... The wedding scene is important. He gives you a lot of stuff subtly. Yeah. He's telling you about these characters, but it does take a while. Yeah. Get through the wedding scene. You're going to see virtually no war, no action of any kind, because the movie's not about that. It's no. about it's about how it affects some um, these particular guys. Yeah, the minds, and it's about friendship and love, and, and uh, I you can't save everyone, because he cannot save Christopher yeah. Walken, no In matter how days, much he tries. In the days of IMDb message boards, I remember there was like a 40 or 50 page thread bringing up their interpretation that Robert De Niro was secretly gay and in love with Christopher Walken. Really? I don't know if I'd buy that. I mean, I'd have to see it again. Gay is like him being gay is brought up a couple times, but it's just right. like John Cazell fucking with him. But right. You never know with fucking Chimino, man. Anything right. could be well, of I mean, importance. Well, the thing is, is that, you know, it's it's funny that you brought it up because his the Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, which he did before that, is about two guys just becoming friends and having such a strong bond. Hmm. You know, and that's a theme that is in, you know, his films. Do you think he may have been gay? Bond. Did you see him at the end of his life? He looked like a transsexual, really? man. Yeah. yeah. It was rough. That. When he, in the 70s, I just because I saw, like, the Oscar speech or something, I was just looking at it. Yeah. He looked like, you know, just a schlubby 
guy from Brooklyn or something. And, like, later in his life, he looked like fucking Phil Spector mixed with Michael Jackson. <laughs> Phil Spector mixed with Michael Jackson. Do you know, there's this theory that Michael Jackson may have been castrated in his youth. Chemically. How do you, how do you have kids, then? Hmm. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> But then again, are like, they really biologically as kids? I don't know. I just look at. I have some sperm. But just, look at the way, because the way that it was brought up is, um, he's always talking about he never had a childhood. Well, he's, he's always he's a child. Him. Neverland Ranch. He could be yeah. a child forever. He was a well, child he, forever. He had a horrible His, life. I mean, yeah. When he was in the Jackson Five, you know, he he talks. I think it was like an open interview where he. You know, all of his brothers were, like, in the hotel room together, and they would tell him, because he was the youngest, to just, you know, cover the blankets if you hear anything, and they would bring in girls and fuck them and stuff in the room, and, you know, mm. he was super young, you know, that had to fuck with his head. You know, well, the thing not only about that is, the hotel room. All, the, only, the other part of that argument that he may have been chemically castrated was, look at his brothers, they look like, you know, normal fit dudes. Um, he had not an uh, ounce of muscle on him. The guy was like a goddamn, a goddamn piece of paper. A stiff wind is going to fucking knock him on his ass. Right. Yeah. It's possible. He could fucking move. He could fucking move and he could fucking sing. Do you like Michael Jackson? Um, yeah, I like some of his music. I mean, I, I don't really listen to it, you know. But I mean, There's, you know, a couple of those tunes that, you know, really... Yeah, like Billy Jean's good, you know. Yeah. Smooth How about criminal. the Alien Ant Farm cover? That, for some reason, I, was popular. I own that album. The yeah. anthology, I fucking loved that shit. It fucking, was, it was, it was a good really album. Right. I, I didn't Courage. know the album. I only knew that one. Courage was on the Sean Palmer Pro uh, Snowboarder fucking uh, PS2 game. I had that, and... Uh, Attitude was another song from that album that I really loved, and yeah. the move. There was actually a song called Movies, which was really great. They oh. never made another good album though. That was was that album. their? Had they? Were they touring a lot before that, or they just? That um, was their debut album. Seriously? Yep, it was their first album. Pretty sure. It's kind of surprising yeah. that it took off at least. Yeah, that that well, that was the huge hit. Was their cover of Smooth Criminal, which I liked. Yeah, I, I remember. It was okay. I thought it was good. When MTV actually played music videos, that fucking music video was. Did crazy. you used to watch? I feel like I used to watch TRL way more than somebody actually should have. I didn't have cable, but I would go over to my friend's house next door, and we would just watch fucking nah. MTV and like say TRL and stuff. And you'd see the Limp Bizkit music videos for like Boiler. All this weird shit. <laughs> Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Yeah, exactly. A boiler had such Why a Why do people weird... hate Limp Bizkit? That's what I understood. Like, you know. New metal, rap rock, you know, they were the worst version of it. <laughs> yeah. um, there's a couple songs that I, I mean. I don't like, like, I'm not a big fan of theirs, but it always like, surprised me when there's like yeah, the somebody who's and, really popular yeah. and then there's a huge backlash against they, them. They sold the shit out of records too. They were fucking huge. Like Creed. Yeah. Everyone hated, hates Creed now. Everyone hates fucking uh, Nickelback now. Well, Creed and Limp Bizkit are better than Nickelback. <laughs> Look at this photograph. Yeah. I fucking hate Nickelback. They're, they're in, I'm indifferent to them. I don't listen to it, only, and I don't worry about it. Every time I think about them, I just think about that one song. But, um, Look at this photograph. I think of animals. You know? You ever heard that song? Probably. You were fucking in the back of the car like animals. <laughs> it's like, I don't think it's I have heard terrible. that. That's really <laughs> awkward. Yeah, it's it's like, weird. Oh, we never gonna them. quit. This is something of an it. When did like it come out? That was on the same album as Photograph. I'm surprised because it's, it's they had terrible. like these gay sort of pop rock songs, and then dude, all their songs were about we're fucking, fucking in the beach. We're yeah. fucking in the back. It was all about. It's like Motley Crue, and they were like another version of Motley Crue, where it's just about fucking chicks and drinking and, beer. Like '80s '80s glam rock. It never. Yeah. I don't know why it's called metal. Glam, but, yeah, glam metal. Anyways, it never hair metal. Yeah. Hair metal. It never really. Shit. It doesn't do it for me. I mean, maybe I like Poor Sugar on me. It's kind of cool, I guess. Well, Def Leppard wasn't when they first started. They weren't really hair metal. They were actually well. They, good. I would say they're probably not hair metal. You're right. 
Yeah, Death Metal. They I mean, just they were, happened to be in the wrong. They were the they were the first kind of British new wave of heavy metal. Yeah, and they just they happened to be performing more. during the wrong time, so yeah. they get lumped in with that. They do. Same like, thing with Scorpions. They can kind of get yeah. a little lumped in there. And I'm not a big fan of the Scorpions. No. I can always hear the German accent through it. Well, they played fucking rock me like a hurricane in the fucking trailer for the hurricane heist, which I was like, oh god, I'm this shocked. is the worst. This is the well, fucking what, worst. what would you expect? Did you <laughs> well, saw the same movie I did, right? Yeah. It made sense. Like for it was that called the Mach, It may have been called Mach Five originally, or it's called <laughs> Mach Five Overseas or something. Because I saw in my research. In case you guys didn't know, I do tons of research oh, yeah. for these films. I saw a couple posters where it said it was the same poster, but instead of Hurricane Heist, it said Mach Five or something like that. Mach Five wouldn't have helped. Hurricane Heist made it a bad... The name Hurricane Heist made it a better movie, in my opinion. Yeah, it's a decent title. Decent title. Yeah. What are uh, some of your favorite sort of adventure films? Well, uh, you did bring up earlier... Uh, or did you? Um, the, the Mummy Reboot. Hellraiser? <laughs> the Mummy Reboot. With... Uh, uh, not, not the fucking one with Tom Cruise. That was shit. But uh, as Brendan far Fraser as one. as far as ninety nine percent of the people listening, that is the mummy. That's not a reboot. That is the mummy, the yeah. one with Brendan Fraser. Yeah, well, it is. It is a reboot, though. Um, have he, you ever seen the original? Yes, I have. I've seen all the original uh, Universal. Are movies. they worth it? Uh, is, am I going to get anything out of it? The Wolfman, you can avoid. I, I believe is. I didn't like the new, the new one. Was boring with uh, Benicio. Anthony wrong. Hopkins, maybe 2009, 2008 really, um, it came out. I really like like the first half of that movie when there's the fog. The like, atmosphere. Like, you know, yeah. And uh, when he's in the insane asylum and he's got the jacket on, he's like, I'll fucking kill you all. And then he transforms. Unfortunately, there was a lot of CG. Hmm. Um, actually, Rick Baker did all the makeup for the movie. It's a shame um, they would then use CG. They CG'd over his makeup. And he still won an Oscar for that movie, but that was the movie that broke him. His main dream was to do Creature from the Black Lagoon. Uh, what is is he and Benicio del Toro part of some cult or something? What the fucking Creature, Creature? from the Black Lagoon? Oh, why do they love it so much? Well, I, I love Creature from the Black Lagoon. It's good. Yeah, I, I really like it. I mean, you can see like the zipper on the back of the creature. So it's everything, just cool. everything but the Wolfman is worth a revisit. Or a Dracula's visit. good. Um, you know, Frankenstein I think would probably still hold up. No one gives two shits about Bella. <laughs> uh, yeah, Dracula is good. Um, but uh, from, you know, maybe the mummy, the original, doesn't hold up. But the, the Wolfman really didn't for me. The Wolfman was, like, awful. Cheesy. Yeah, it just, it, yeah, it wasn't good to me. That one really did not hold up. I haven't seen any of them. I haven't had access to them. Yeah. And I, you know, it's, they can't move, scary movies don't scare me now. Are fucking ones from the 30s and 40s going to? Well, there is a there is one called the Uninvited from like. 44. I've seen it. It's a gothic horror movie. Yeah, I haven't seen it's it. really kind of forgettable. See it yeah, it's on Criterion. I've heard if it's like fucking amazing. Maybe I should rewatch it, but I watch it. The it cover it, is for Criterion. Yeah, the cover it's looks gorgeous. really dope. That's why I borrowed it from the library. Yeah. It um. If. See, the problem with a gothic horror movie is as soon as you hear that, you know exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I, I really want to see it. I haven't seen it. It, um, it reminds me a lot of horror movies of the time. Like, you ever see Haunted. House on Haunted Hill or The Haunting? I like, yeah, I like the original Haunting. I haven't seen Haunting. the original Haunting. House on Haunted Hill I've seen. Uh, Haunting, it has the guy from West Side great. Story in it. Yeah, I know Vincent Price is in House on Haunted Hill, the first, the original. Yeah, he played the effeminate doctor. Yeah. Okay. Later reprised <laughs> by Price Liam Neeson. Great. Yeah, and Chris Kattan was fucking in the remake of House on Haunted Hill. <laughs> Did you ever see that? Yeah. Oh, Wait, man. was he The Haunting or House on Haunted Hill? House on Haunted Hill. I've remake. seen the original Haunting. I've seen both the remake of The Haunting and House on Haunted Hill. Yeah. Yeah, Chris Kattan. Corky <laughs> fucking Romano. It's like... I can't remember. I think he gets like smushed between two walls or something in House on Haunted Hill or something. That or the... Falls off a cliff that's one of the worst time. movies I've ever seen. Oh, I yeah. rewatched it a few months ago, maybe. That and 13 Ghosts. 13 Ghosts? That came out. 13 Ghosts is, isn't as bad as House on Haunted Hill, but it's yeah. not good. 
Tom Tony Hardy. Shaloub, that girl from American Pie, was in it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no! I know there was this black girl rapper. What was her name? She had maybe like one or two songs, and that was her one movie. She was really yeah. bad in it. On House on Haunted Hill. No, and um, Thirteen Ghosts. 13 House Ghosts. on Haunted Hill was awful. Yeah, Thirteen Ghosts has the guy who played Shaggy in Scooby Doo. Skeet, <laughs> not Skeet, the other one, Matthew Lillard. Yeah, that might be his name. I don't know. What do you think about Matthew? You don't think Matthew Lillard's a good actor? I mean, I think um, he's okay. I saw him in, like, a couple things on TV. I think he was on Justified for, like, a guest appearance, and he was pretty decent. Yeah. Um, I think he's gotten typecast as just being, you know, this weirdo. I liked Without a Paddle. It's a real stupid fucking movie, but it's kind of He fun. reminds me of, like, he reminds me of Norman Reedus, if Norman Reedus didn't get typecast as the badass guy. Yeah, he, he's, like, Norman Reedus just looks like a badass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, go see uh, the Blade sequel that he was in and tell me that. Oh, I think was it was the Trinity? second one. No, the second one. Blade 2 is fucking awesome, though. Yeah. Guillermo directed Blade 2. I saw Blade it a while great. ago. I don't remember too much about Love it. Love Ron Perlman in that movie. Just fucking... He's just, Ron Perlman's always great, I feel like. Yeah, he's... I, I'm a, such a big fan of him. You ever see him in Kronos? Yeah. He plays he, it so he, over he, the top. Oh, it's it's looks, great. Well, Guillermo couldn't even, like, pay him. He was going to walk right off the set, and Guillermo was, like, crying. I, I heard or read that or something. How, it's why, criterion why did he? Why did he stay? What did he? he just because like, he felt him. bad? Okay. He, he said, "On my name, I promise you, on everything that I am, on my name." And look, look at the career that they had together, making a bunch of movies. Is together. the Spanish lead in Kronos a big time Spanish actor? I don't, I don't know, but I. Uh, he was in Kronos, and I'm pretty sure he was in uh, Devil's Backbone and yeah. Pan's Labyrinth. I really like Kronos. Yeah, I think it's nice. Yeah. I don't like it as much as Devil's Backbone or Pan's no. Labyrinth, but I think it's a really. You know, a nice yeah. little popcorn and, movie and with some depth. It's funny to me because when you look at the behind the scenes of it, like Guillermo, like he he's like so upset with the movie and he doesn't feel like he got to do really what he wanted. But there's just certain shots in that movie, yeah. like when that old guy is like licking the blood off the bathroom floor. Very effective. Very oh, disturbing. Such a good shot. Yeah, we saw a great. preview, or I saw a video. Never mind. Forget I was what I was talking about. It was. Kronos is very a very serviceable film, a nice little picture. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. It does not reach the heights of Pan's Labyrinth or no. The Devil's Back. If you're going to watch Pan's Labyrinth or The Devil's Backbone, watch Pan's Labyrinth first. That is key. I yeah. wish I had done that. Yeah, Guillermo's uh, his Spanish films are really good. I what think. about what any of his except for Hellboy? Yeah, the first Hellboy I like. I don't really the like first Hellboy, Hellboy. Too. Yeah. and I like Blade too. Blade 2 is fun. Anything and else? I you enjoyed... ever see Species or Mimic, whatever he did? <laughs> I saw Mimic, yeah. Mimic is not that great. Nah. Um, I did enjoy Pacific Rim, but once again, it's it's got those problems, you know? Yeah. His, his English language movies just have problems. They just feel awkward. There's a lost in translation kind of feel to them, you know? But then why are his Spanish movies so fucking good? Because it's in his native language. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's writing in Spanish. He's, you know, directing. I've and, always thought about that. Is it, know? like, if some a person of another language, like, say I'm Spanish, do I think, say, I'm t you're talking to me, you say, hey, how are you? Do I think in Spanish, bueno, y tú? Or, and then right. say it in English? Or do I think in English and then say it? You know what yeah. I mean? It's always, like, one of those weird things that I think about. Yeah, I I really think that that's one of the main things, because, like, if you look at, like, Alfonso Cuaron, uh, he, he did Gravity, which I don't, I don't know if you've seen that. I haven't seen it yet. But he wrote that with his son, and the dialogue is just, like, super simplistic in that movie, because they're not Didn't he do English Training movies. Day? They didn't write no, it, no, though. No. That was, that was Antoine Fuqua. Fuqua. Antoine Fuqua. No, he did uh, Children of Men. I love Children of Men. Children of Men. I think it's, if you want to see a great sci-fi film that's fucking deep there's motivation there's fucking political ties there's subtext there's fucking yeah. this and that watch children of men it's yeah, fucking incredible the cinematography in that movie especially towards the end when there's just chaos and war as and... perfect a sci-fi film oh. as you're gonna see i think yeah and that fucking scene in the car that like one take with the with julianne morgan just get yeah get fucking shot right in the head that was so oh, effective because fucking amazing. you're like, okay, she's going to go on an adventure with this lady now. 
Right? No. Nope. Adios. What's the name of the the dude who was in it? He was in twelve. The black dude who was in it, who was uh, all. He was in Twelve Years a Slave. Do you know how to Chiwetel pronounce? Chiwetel Ejiofor. Chiwetel Ejiofor. Ejiofor. Say it yeah. again for me. Chiwetel Ejiofor. Chiwetel Ejiofor. 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 <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I yeah, just, was, even when really I see his name, I can't think of how to say it. Yeah, it's a tough one to pronounce. He has been, been he's been in a ton of mo- he was he's been an actor for a long time. He hasn't really made this push as like a, a lead though until yeah. like Twelve Years a Slave, and then it sort of ended. Yeah, I haven't really seen him in much. He well, he did do Triple Nine, which didn't do well. Triple Nine. Triple Nine. What is it? It's like a wannabe heist movie. It's like oh, a wannabe okay. heat. Yeah. Norman Reedus was in that too. Funny enough, he's um gonna be in. Some video game or something. What's his name is doing? Death Stranding, Kojima. Yeah, because yeah. fucking Konami fired him. Because <laughs> Konami has no idea what the fuck they're doing. We will, you know. Well, yes, they do. They, they're, they're making pachinko machines and making millions of dollars. Yeah. Those. Well, think about it this way: you pump in, let's say, a hundred million to a video game, and let's say you make back a hundred and fifty. You pump in ten million into pachinko pachinko machines. You're gonna make. Yeah. Hundreds of millions back. You know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. They're, they're just. They're not interested in. Vi- they're a bit. They're interested in making money. They're not interested yep. in making video games. And that's what most all video game companies want to do now. That's why there's all these microtransactions and loot crate boxes. It's all becoming well, a fucking pachinko Tomb Raider machine. and Uncharted are virtually the same game. Well, in my opinion, I think Uncharted's better. Yeah. I mean, I enjoyed the reboot of Tomb Raider. I didn't play the. Uh, the sequel I didn't play the sequel either. either. Um, they added a lot of weird shit. Um, I played the demo, like a bunch of like crafting and yeah. Um, well, the uh, the first one had some elements of that, like upgrade you could system. upgrade your gun and stuff, yeah. and like. But uh, yeah, the second one has like a leveling up system. All games are trying to shit. incorporate stuff like that, either a crafting system or like yeah. it's going to be elements. Yeah. Everything's trying to be a fucking RPG, and I hate that shit. I just want give me a game. Give me if you. If you have a vision for a game, give it to me. If not, then don't fucking cobble together bullshit. Yeah, frustrating. What are some of your favorite adventure movies, though? Uh, <laughs> 20 yeah, minutes later. 20 minutes after we've gone on a tangent. But, um, yeah, I do really like um, uh, the, uh, the the Mummy with Brendan Fraser. That's super fun. It's service Bolt. It's a nice little it's, popcorn movie. Yeah. Don't don't go on expecting the world. Yeah, and it's it's weird that Brendan Fraser was the choice to be the lead. Well, he was hot shit back yeah. then. I mean, but he wasn't an action star. That was such a huge gamble. Change. Yeah. yeah, and it really works. Um, you can avoid the other two sequels, but um, the first one is really enjoyable. Um, a nice little Indiana Jones style romp. Yeah. In ancient Egypt, well, or in nineteen uh, yeah. twenties, it's, it's like a it's a riff on Indiana Jones, but it works. You yeah, know, with uh, like the Beatles and everything. And it's all. a good five, six, seven movie. Yeah, yeah it was good. Yeah, I'd probably give it a seven. I, I I'd like to rewatch it. I want to get the Blu-ray. It's like she um is the lady is kind of annoying. What's her name? Rachel, Rachel Weiss. Weiss. Yeah, she can get a little annoying, a little hammy yeah. sometimes, but that's the role she's playing, I suppose. Yeah, I, I watched the shit out of that. I have the VHS. So I used to. Well, they used to play it on T- TNT like once a week. Yeah. Whenever when they played movies on fucking cable and stuff, but days of bygone past, I suppose. Yeah. And I, uh, I love fucking Temple of Doom. That's like my favorite uh, Indiana Jones movie. Yeah. Seriously, it's like a fucking straight up horror movie. I okay. love it, dude. Fucking ripping hearts out of chest. See, when I was a kid, it was my brains. favorite. When I was a kid, it was my favorite. Yeah. Now that I've matured and, and watched the other ones and, and really learned to understand yeah. what I'm seeing, Raiders, a thousand times, mm-hmm. is the better movie. Well, I'm not, I didn't say it was the best movie. Okay, just fair enough. You're right, your favorite. Movie. I got you. <laughs> um, but I, I wouldn't agree that Raiders is the best. I think Last Crusade is... Way better. Mm-hmm. It t- I mean, you can't get Crusade without Raiders because those two completely tie together. Yeah, with Sean Connery being his dad and everything. But the even thing, the, the, the thing about Raiders is it stands on its own. It's so the um, yeah, so many memorable scenes, man. When they fucking when he first gets into the tomb and he's looking at thing and the music, ooh, all mystical and stuff. Yeah. Dude's face is melting and stuff. Yeah, I mean, well, all three films are really good. I mean, Keep I just, your eyes shut. Yeah, 
I uh, I just think that Temple of Doom and Last Crusade for a while are paced in, better. until Kingdom of the Crystal Skull came out. I really disliked Temple of Doom. Really? Wow. Yeah, there's haters out there. I there's just people who hate it. I just thought you know it's cheesy, it's goofy, it's not really that exciting. Um, wow. after seeing Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, I've grown to really appreciate it. <laughs> it's um. It's a fun little adventure with Indy. An extra it's little like adventure with Indy. That movie is the reason why we have a rating system. That movie was PG. <laughs> and there's fucking hearts being ripped out of chess. It's so fucked up. It's great. It's, I fucking love that movie. There was some flim flam or something with the last crew, with Raiders, um, where they had to go in and cover up one of the faces melting or something. With the fire. The uh, main... The Nazi general or commandant, about the, lieutenant, or whatever. The controversy with the interview when they tried to do the same thing. Huh? There's a face melting at the end of the interview. Oh no, He's I don't remember that. Because the ending of Raiders, they just hold on that dude's face melting. They don't ever cut away. There's one where the face is enveloped and is blocked by flames and smoke and stuff. I'm pretty sure it's either the main guy Belloc or it's the German, not the sadist german with the leather coat the other one <laughs> can't remember his name yeah. can't remember any of the german generals and those guys just names. talking about it makes me want to rewatch the trilogy <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. been a few years for me since i've seen them i um have the dvd somewhere yeah i told you not to trust anyone you, because you didn't listen to my advice. I really bit that one, huh? <laughs> God, ends justify the means, my friends. Yeah. I'm trying to think of other good adventure movies. Um, Sahara is kind of fun. I don't know if you've Never ever saw seen it. Matthew, Matthew McConaughey. McConaughey. Totally bombs, but it's actually kind of a fun movie. Um, See that? I always get mixed up with, like... Was there another desert-based movie that Phoenix. came out? Okay. <laughs> that which is a remake. Randy Quaid. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, I don't know, Andy Quaid. I can't think of, I'm at a loss. It's I can't a think of any it's... adventure movies. Yeah. Um, Journey to the West was pretty cool, Romancing the Stone. Romancing, Romancing the, the Stone's Stone a, good a good adventure one. movie, yeah. Oh, I love the fucking, it's violent too. Never uh, Ending Story, a great kid's adventure movie. Yeah. Um, but Romancing Roma the Stone, it was yeah, funny. The sequel, not very good. I don't remember. I may have seen the sequel. Yeah. I may not have. I can't yeah, recall. The Romancing Stone has that great scene where the guy gets his fucking hand bitten off by a crocodile. <laughs> Danny DeVito, <laughs> Kathleen Turner, and fucking oh, Michael Douglas man. should have done way more work together. God, I'll tell you, Kathleen Turner was so fucking hot in the 80s. The so um, Man Heat. with Two Brains. Oof. I haven't seen Body Heat. The Man with Two Brains, for some reason, I always remember being super sexy. And another, yeah. a super funny... I'm going to give... I'll, I got my reckon... All right. No adventure films. Keep keep going with this adventure talk. My, adventure. my friend, I'm sorry. Um, what are we talking about? Romancing the Stone. That's a good pick. Um, geez. <laughs> All right. How about... How about we close it out with yeah. Rudy Land's special recommendations. Underrated or underseen comedies. Underrated or underseen comedies. All right, well, I'll start off one right off the bat. You brought up Danny DeVito. I'm glad you did. He directed it. Death to Smoochie. Still haven't seen it. Fucking, I mean, other than on Comedy Central. Fucking love it. Way ahead of its time. It was shit all over by critics. Flopped. Yeah. Edward Norton and Robin Williams playing... Barney-esque you know, characters. Playing Barney-esque characters who are on a children's show and... Robin Williams gets fired, and Edward Norton is the guy and he who wants him. he wants his job back, and he exactly. wants revenge on Edward Norton. Yeah, and it's just it was very dark, right? Such a fucking dark comedy, like brutally dark. Danny DeVito is so usually funny. pretty successful when he helms the director's chair, man. Yeah, yeah, he he's um, you know, he's a guy who even now it's just so funny. I love Danny DeVito, so that's that that would be my first like super underrated pick. Um, I, the, the DVD is out of print. It's never been on Blu-ray, but Warner Brothers put it out. Yeah. So they have reprinted the, the movie. So you can get a DVD from their site, Warner Archive. That's and lame. You might be able to get one from Amazon too. 
So it's either yeah. you got to buy it digitally or rent it digitally or else you ain't seeing it, basically. Well, you, you can get a DVD copy. They just make it to order. Seriously? Yeah, Warner Brothers is really cool about that. So I didn't know they did that. Yeah, I got... Uh, I actually Do they charge a, you out the ass for it? No, nah, it's only like 15 bucks, maybe. It's you, pretty good. And usually they, they'll make a bunch of copies and they'll give them to Amazon so you can get it for cheaper. I got the Salt and Sea from them because that was out of print. Salt too. and Sea, uh, Robert De Niro, James Franco... Or uh, no, that's no, Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer. It's an off, yeah. Heroin. Yeah, it's a neo noir, really cool movie. I saw it once. It was better. I saw it it's was really done good. by who did it? DJ Caruso. Oh, never mind that. He did uh, Disturbia and Eagle Eye. I like. I thought it was okay. Val Kilmer. Yeah, I think it's awesome. He was pretty good. He used I to love be pretty neo good. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, going off topic here. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> my first my first text. comedy is be one that I already mentioned. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the... T no. <laughs> Underrated comedy, Man with Two Brains. Steve Martin Steve playing a bumbling fool in another Carl Reiner-directed film. Um, his first wife dies. He meets Kathleen Turner. She's a evil bitch. Meanwhile, in Europe or Spain, wherever they end up, there's this man who's killing people and taking their brains on the streets of London. Yeah, I remember seeing it years ago. On Very, it's like if you like the jerk, you really like it. It's super goofy, super silly. Did Steve Martin write Steve, the script for it? I don't know. It? I can't remember. Yeah. But Steve Martin. Love Steve Martin. Playing a bumbling idiot. That's his. Bread I love him like that. Yeah. <laughs> Not enough roles like that. Planes, trains, and automobiles didn't really do it for me. The other one he did with John Candy, where, or no, I'm thinking of Dan Aykroyd. Never mind. Man with two brains. Nice little picture. Very goofy, very silly. Yeah. So I'm trying to think of another really underrated comedy. I'll probably think of something later that I really should have said. But uh, I'll go with something that I just recently watched, which is um, a really fucking bizarre movie. Uh, it's called Nothing But Trouble. <laughs> Nothing but trouble. It was directed oh, yeah. by, Dan by Dan Aykroyd. Written and written directed by directed. Dan Aykroyd. I just saw it recently on a shitty is fucking it, DVD. Is it funny at all? Is it worth it to watch? It's worth it to watch because it's so How insane. fucking strange it is? He, he he did it right after basically like Ghostbusters 2. So he had like complete like creative, creative control. control over everything. <laughs> and it's just absolutely well, bad shit apparently insane. the script for the original script for Ghostbusters was like thousands of pages like yeah. incredibly long detailed shit oh yeah and basically the directors would edit his scripts because they were just insanity <laughs> yes <laughs> but I love Dan Aykroyd and it's it's just a wild fucking movie I it's saw it insane. once when I was younger I can't really rem remember yeah. much about it There's... except for like the twins and the weird judge <laughs> yeah. the penis nose judge <laughs> yeah there's a lot of weird shit in that and, um, Incredibly bizarre. Yeah, it's just so bizarre. And there's some really cool set design in it. It's it's like it just really builds this world that's just crazy. So if you want to see just a, an insane movie that also flopped, that's not on Blu-ray. It you flopped see hard. It, on DVD. it flopped hard, guys. Yeah, I literally had to see a full frame like fucking version of it. It wasn't even a widescreen version. Oh my god. I still remember that. The fucking, they would sell two versions of the movie. Yeah, two full different screen boxes. and widescreen. Fucking idiots with your I'll, CRTs. I fucking even admit that I would buy full screen versions. I was one of those guys. Well, it's yeah. not the full picture. If, I don't get well, it. Well, if you're looking on a CRT Shame TV, to it makes sense. Yeah, if two t tube TVs. Yeah. It's because if you're watching it on a, a widescreen on a tube TV, you're losing like two thirds of the fucking picture. Yeah, I know. I remember Martin Scorsese used to be on TCM all the time and they would have this commercial that they would run constantly of him talking about Ben-Hur and Seven Brides for Seven uh, brothers, brothers and how that you're missing like half of the movie you're missing the dance sequences you're missing the chariot yeah. sequences well there's some know. movies where uh, yes it it would hinder it to put it in yeah. full screen there's a lot more where it would make no fucking difference you get yeah. you get all the same well, shit all the same story the biggest complaint which I totally understand is that it's basically re-editing the movie you're yeah. literally changing the camera angles. yes so I can understand if 
director being like, this is fucking bullshit. You're re-editing my movie. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, full screen is bad. I was very stupid when I was, you know. But on those tube TVs, when something was in widescreen, it was so shitty. It was so fucking small. You couldn't. Yeah. Even if you had a giant TV, it was shitty. DVDs, like, into, unless you had a flat screen. I mean, DVDs definitely look clearer than a VHS, but you're still broadcasting it on a shitty tube TV. Yeah. You really had to. In order to get the benefits from DVD, Blu-ray, you really got to have a, yeah. you know, flat like, screen TV. If a movie was shot in 185 and you saw it on a tube TV, it was good because the bars were yeah, small. it was like but perfect. anything shot in 235 was fucking torture on a tube TV because yeah. it was just like the black bars were fucking gigantic. Yeah. But we don't have that problem anymore. We've got those nice 16 by 9 TVs now. They finally, <laughs> um, they finally... Caught up. Yeah fucking uh what 80 years after the invention of the television and cinema yeah we'll get some my last pick <laughs> your last comedy pick yeah it's uh very i'm really surprised that no one has heard of it it's relatively recent um mid to late 2000s john c Riley stars a judd apatow picture i believe oh god <laughs> walk hard the dewey cox tale the dewey cox story, story. It's a mock, it's a mock biography movie, because at that time there was a ton of musical biography movies. You had Ray, you had the fucking Walk the Line, Walk the Line, was, yeah. and I'm sure there was a couple others I can't think there was of. Dream Girls, Dream Girls. Yeah, there was a shitload of stuff. It's very parody oriented, very goofy. Mm-hmm. Um, expect expect random laughs. Yeah. It's very very strange. He. During his 60s time, he sings a midget protest <laughs> anthem. Let me hold you, midget man. You, I'll reach for the cereal on the shelf that's too high. It's it's Forrest Gump, but with a musical musician and parody. Yeah. Yeah, I just remember, I saw it once. Jack White plays Elvis Presley. Really? Wow. Well, yeah, come on, man. We're going to get down here. Yeah. There's only two kind of people who know karate. You know that? You know that is? Chinaman? And one of them's me. <laughs> now I want to rewatch it. I just remember when I saw it, I hated it. Yeah. <laughs> fuck, me and my dad watched it, and we were like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> it's like adult swim style comedy. Very. Yeah. It's like super short, too, isn't it? Is it like 80 minutes or something like that? Hour and a half. I watched it work the other day. Hour really? and a half, hour and 40 minutes maybe. Yeah. The music's actually not bad. A couple of tunes like were kind of catchy. I've, I brought it up before. The only scene I remember is at the beginning, <laughs> which I misremember. I misremember him throwing his brother in a wood chipper and he oh, yeah. chopped him in half with a machete. He said, <laughs> let's <laughs> have us. Hey, Nate. Let's. Hey, Dewey. Let's have us a machete fight. Which is a complete parody of the opening of Walk the Line. I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, because it's it, there's a true story with Johnny Cash and his Where he brother. Cut his brother in half. Uh, not 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 quite, but it involves uh, let's say some some bad things happening in a shed. <laughs> he didn't <laughs> rape bloody. and murder his brother, did he? Maybe you'll have to watch Jesus. it to find out. You, you should watch it. I mean, Joaquin Phoenix is. Uh, I've always liked. He's I've great always, in it. He's always been pretty good. Yeah, I'll always remember was, the master for Joaquin. Yeah, he's he's really good in the master, and. Uh, gladiator and he's just fucking amazing there's actually a movie that he's going to come out with this year uh which is kind of like taxi driver called you were never really there which looks really is it cool. going to be like i'm still here his weird art <laughs> documentary i never Did saw you ever that. see that okay no I, I just i i i will say this i did see the david letterman interview the night it happened was it super weird oh it was insane i actually remember like crying because I loved Joaquin Phoenix so much as an actor. Joaquin. Yeah. I thought he lost his mind, truly. <laughs> I really generally thought that was well, real. I remember, like, oh when it, I remember when it all happened. I'm like, oh, yeah. okay, Joaquin Phoenix is going to stop acting and be a white rapper now. All right. Right. It'd I be was, weird, It but... was so disturbing. Like, people forget. Like, I, I was like, oh, my fucking God. He's literally losing his mind. Like, he's like... And I remember they were showing clips of him... Earlier, a few years, when he was talking to some interviewer, and he says, is there a frog in my hair? You can look it up on YouTube. It'll be Joaquin Phoenix on a frog. He's, like, talking to this lady, and he's like, there's a frog in my hair, right? <laughs> you want to see where it wasn't an art movie? Fucking the dude from Back to the Future who played the father. Crispin yeah. Glover. 
Apparently he's fucking bad shit insane. He's great though. I yeah. fucking love Crispin Glover. He's fucking fantastic, man. Just seeing him in Wild at Heart. You've seen Wild at Heart, the David Lynch movie? No. Oh my god, there's a scene where his mom's making all these peanut butter sandwiches. I get sandwiches. very intimidated by David Lynch movies. I saw them all in Drive. I really like it, but it's like, yeah. it's really fucking hard to figure very, out what's going on, man. Very select movies are comprehensible. Wild yeah. at Heart is one of those movies that's just so weird. Did you, li- you didn't like Mulholland Drive? I fucking hated Mulholland Drive. I really like it. I, I, uh, we've talked you about really got to do the work, but Wild at Heart is good. Yeah, Wild at Heart is enjoyable. Um, they're actually re-releasing it. Um, Shout Factory is going to be putting it out. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think. Blue Velvet's great. Yeah, I like Blue Velvet. Um, yeah. Daddy wants to fuck! <laughs> Dennis Hopper's fucking great. That movie. I love Dennis Hopper. Yeah, sad. Here is, uh, well, you know, not many people survive getting... Um, being on top of a s- underground train and then having their head rammed into a some kind of a signal, I think it was. Man, you're not going to survive without your head, man. Yeah. Got to get ahead. Speed kills. For sh- good job. <laughs> He's on with it. Well, for Clark W. Griswold and Rudy Land, um, you know, go fuck yourselves, you fucking covetous, covetous pieces of shit. Bye.